You're still tuned in to News 360 here on TV3. It's now time for Mission. Don't forget that it's proudly supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the European Union. Let's start off Mission tonight from the education sector and congestion, lack of ventilation and constant threats of reptiles and rodents are scenes that greet any visitor at the girls' dormitory of the Pandai Senior High School in the Pandai district of the northern region. The school authorities have been compelled to convert classrooms into dormitories due to the abandoned dormitory projects started some few years ago. Pandai is one of the deprived and isolated districts with some of the worst road networks in the northern region. The district can't boast of a single tarred road with about 95% of communities lacking all the basic amenities for human development. Bandai Senior High School, formerly the training facility for the Greek ministry, is the only secondary school serving the district and beyond and has a population of 1,171. But the school has not seen any major renovation since it was converted into a second cycle institution in 1992. Due to the increasing number of students and lack of expansion over the years, existing facilities are facing collapse. Immediate attention we need to give to PANSEC is to look at our accommodation problem. Fortunately, we are told there are two projects going on. A 24-room boys' dormitory, which is a story building, is at the roofing stage. It was started from the records 2014 and left at that stage. We have a dormitory block for girls. That one is being roofed and probably just need a bit of effort to fix it. So certainly the dormitory situation is a concern that we would want all who matter to hear and not only hear but to act to salvage the situation of Bandai Senior High School. But the intriguing thing that caught the attention of the news team was the manner, the place, and how students were served their breakfast. <laughs> the privileged few bought some additions to go with the dry rice water. The team then visited the girls' dormitory. The scene here is not conducive for human habitation. Madame Kasim Aisha is the girls' house mistress. This is a human institution, and you know they come from different backgrounds. Some are well trained, others to a different story. So in as much as some are trying to keep the place tidy, others who are not giving them the opportunity to. So one will sweep, the other will come and throw rubbish around. Because they, are, they have limited um, toilet facility, they prefer going to the bush. So most of them visit the bush. That's a free range system, uh, which is having a lot of health implications. This development made the team curious and decided to return later in the evening. The team arrived during prep time and in some two hours, signaling the end of prep and ending all activities for the day. Um, yeah, I thought it was no, 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 I went to start up. But what caught our attention next was even more devastating. 
The congestion in this room tells us about the challenges the student go through. After having their prep, they're here to rest, but it's not comfortable because the heat alone here for me is something else. But what is more challenging and what is more sad is their colleagues who are out there sleeping, exposing themselves to other dangers, reptiles and mosquito bite, which at the end of the day can result in some challenges as well, which will bring them some difficulties. This is a price they have to pay for attaining education. It is a sad situation for them. The situation was more serious at the girls' dormitory. Here, the ladies sleep in twos and they have mosquito nets. The level of ventilation is poor. And with a mosquito net and poor ventilation, just imagine how hot this place will be. I'm already sweating. I just came in for about a few minutes. So it tells you the challenges these ladies go through. Here at the main girls' dormitory, over 40 girls are crammed into this small space due to lack of adequate rooms. You'll be in a room, and normally you'll find a reptile in the dormitory, and the girls, you know, you normally become scared. And then when that happens, you fear to go back to where you saw that and to sleep. And we normally see scorpions too. So it's endangering our lives. It affects our learning because, for instance, if I see a snake on my bed or under my bed for today, if I go to class, I may not learn as the way i supposed to learn because I'm afraid that when I come back to sleep after preps, maybe there is a possibility that there will be other snakes under the bed. Situations like these clearly hampers various efforts by stakeholders in education across the world in realizing the MDGs on education, especially the girl child. From Pandai, Nana Kweku Edia for TV3 News. Now, and to help us further interrogate this issue on the phone lines right now is Matthew Nyendam. He is the Member of Parliament for Pandai in the Northern Region. Good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. Good evening, my sister. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Um, first of all, how long have you known about the situation at the Pandai Senior High School? Well, let me say good evening to your, your viewers and good evening to your people and Merry Christmas too. Let me also use the opportunity to thank TV3 for using your airtime at this time to highlight the challenges confronting Bandai Senior High School. Now back to your question. I, I've been a member of parliament for the past four years. This is my second term. And ever since I've become a member of parliament, I've, I've lived with these challenges. So I'm fully aware of what is going on. And I've made several efforts to solve the problems that we currently have in Bandai. And so far, it has not changed much. So if you ask when, 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 when did I get to know of this problem, I've, I've known for a very long time. And I have forced the contractors, especially the, the, the ladies or the guest dormitory that the headmaster mentioned about. There is, a, there is a contractor called Business. He got the project. And I followed him. I have followed him. I have called him. I cannot even count. I have to take him from Panda to Accra to be able to get some money for him to do the roofing. And for almost two years now, he has never picked my call. I have tried and got tired. The story building that, uh, that you also highlighted on is supposed to be awarded to the Mr. Mr. Zoka, that is the NBC uh, regional chairman. And ever since we took over, I have called him several times. I've asked him to come and do the job because if you begin to advocate for his change now, people will begin to ruin so many politics into it. But I think that uh, he's our man, he's an NDC man, it doesn't matter, he's a Ghanaian. And if he has, a, he, has a, he, has a, he has got a contract to work on, what I need from him is to make sure that the project is completed because that is what the people need. But the bottom line is that I blame the consultants and then the engineers. They are supposed to be those responsible to report to the, the, the to Accra or the head office about the ongoing project. 
but unfortunately, the engineers and the consultants are not also doing so because these projects have been come a standstill for almost two, four years now. And as a member of parliament and the DC, we follow them. I keep calling them, but unfortunately, the story is what we are seeing. Um, Honorable, from what you're saying, it sounds like you're trying to say that your hands are tied and you can do absolutely nothing about it. Is that my the case? My hands are not tied, but my sister, I am a member of parliament. I represent the people. What I need to do is to make sure that I'm able to beg, lobby, and get some of these projects mm. to the area. But the one who awards the contract is the government. And I, like I said, I blame the consultants because they are supposed to be the eye. They are supposed to make sure that some of these works are completed and completed on time. You call the, uh, the contractors, you talk to them, and the people are not uh, on site. And the consultants that are supposed to write officially to either advocate for a termination or a continuity, they are not also writing. Um, have there been any processes towards legal action? to be taken against the consultants and, of course, the, the contractors. <laughs> My sister, mm. I haven't got into that area. Uh, there's not been any legal actions against them. Do I you plan on doing action. that? Is, is that in the pipeline? Is this something you, con you will consider doing? Considering no, what, what, the situation. What I, think I, sh I should be doing is to make sure that maybe I um, get the head office to terminate the contract and re-award it to people who are willing to do the job because if you look at business for instance i've crossed it with get fund and i'm reliably told that they don't owe him they paid him his money so if they paid you up to where you have done what stops you from completing the job so that you can go for your last money well with azoka i spoke to azoka not less than two months ago and he promised me he was going to do that to site very as soon as possible and up to date he has not gone to site so what i need to do is to report to get fund that this man is not doing the job, re-award, terminate the project, and re-award it to somebody who has a financial model or who has the willing to do it, and the person will do it. But legal, legally, I have not thought about that one. So, so what, what you're talking about, probably re-awarding the contract to someone else, but right now, the ones who already have the contract, you, it seems they can't be made to do what they're supposed to do. What's the guarantee that the next person who comes for the next contract can be made to do the right thing? This is, this is not the first time contracts are going to be cancelled and re-awarded. Mm. Sometimes, some of, it depends on how somebody gets a contract. Mm. Some are politically awarded. The person may not have the financial model to be able to execute the project. So if, they, if, if, if the consultants, like I said, have done their work diligently, they should be able to advise, uh, uh, get fund appropriately, that this contractor mm -hmm. is not having the financial model or is refusing to do it. And when there's pressure on that contractor, even if they need, they need for him to go and borrow and come and do it, he right, has to sir. go and borrow and do it. But if he realizes that the contract is cancelled and mm. re-awarded to somebody who has a financial model to do it, okay. I, I can assure you that, my sister, it wouldn't take long. Some of these projects will be completed. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for making time for us this evening. I've been speaking with the MP for Pandai, Mr. Matthew Nyendam. And we've been talking about the situation at the Pandai Senior High School in the northern region. The deplorable situation there, 40 girls sleeping in one room. Not necessarily the type of situation you would want your child to be going through. And uh, don't forget that mission has been brought to you by um, Star Ghana that then funded by Danida, UK Aid and the European Union. Union. We'll be right back after this.